You don't need a parachute to go skydiving. You need a parachute to go skydiving twice. Today, I'm going to recap a 2020 action sci-fi film called Boss Level. A quick warning, there will be major spoilers ahead. In the morning at 7 a.m., a man breaks into Roy Pulver apartment, a retired Delta Force soldier, and tries to kill him and the woman he slept with. Roy knows exactly where and how to move to avoid all this. Then a helicopter with a gunman appears outside his window and shoots his apartment until it explodes. Roy jumps off the window to land on a truck filled with sand, which he had missed 22 times before he started to get it right. He then takes over a car and drives away from two more assassins in a minivan. Roy does not know their names, so he calls them, Pam and Esmeralda. These women chase him and shoot at him throughout the city, but Roy knows how to escape them as long as he does not get distracted and remembers to dodge the bus. Since this time he does not, the day resets and restarts again. During each loop, only minor things change, depending entirely on what Roy decides or forgets to do. Besides the man at his apartment, the helicopter, and Pam, there are other assassins like Wan Yin, who usually kills him with a sword, Kaboom, a short man that plants a bomb on him, Smiley, who likes to kill him by impaling him with a lance and tying him to the back of his truck, the German twins, and a guy that looks a lot like him, so he calls him Roy number two. He occasionally manages to kill some of them, but it doesn't matter because the others eventually find him and kill him anyway. Roy thinks the one with the answers to explain what is going on is his ex-wife, but when he calls her office, the one to pick up the phone is her boss Colonel Clive Venter, who tells him that she has died in an accident, but Roy believes he has killed her. Sadly though, he never manages to live long enough to find out why. On the days he manages to escape the bus and Pam, Roy makes it to Jake's diner where he must hurry to take a seat at the bar or the last spot will be taken by Dai Feng, a world champion sword master that Jake has a crush on. Roy proceeds to get deeply drunk while listening to the man sitting next to him babe talk about internal security and conspiracy theories. At 12.47, the assassins always find him and kill him right there in the middle of the diner, which means Roy has never made it even a minute past this point. If he does not come to the diner, then he just gets killed earlier. Roy has already tried as many alternate roads as possible. As he is shot once again by all of the assassins, Roy remembers the day before the time loop started. He is visiting his ex-wife Gemma Wells at her workplace Dino Laboratories after she left him a message asking him to come over because her company is hiring. However, she does not seem too interested in her resume or to reconnect after not seeing each other in a while. She just starts taking Roy's measurements and a sample of his hair, which draws blood when she pulls it. While Venter and his bodyguard Brett watch them through the security cameras, Roy asked Gemma about this weird machine she is working on, which she claims can unmake all time and space and even destroy the planet if used improperly. Roy also brings up their son who has no idea he is his father and thinks Roy is merely a family friend. Roy begs to be heard and tells Gemma that he can accept losing her because he chose work over her, but he deserves a chance to be in his son's life. Their conversation is interrupted by Brett, who reminds Gemma this is a restricted area, but Gemma says she has got a special agreement with Venter. When Roy tries to give him his resume, Brett says they are not hiring, which means Gemma lied, but she sends him away before he could say more. Before Roy leaves the building, Gemma tells him she has sent him a birthday present that is incredibly important for him to open, and that he should remember Osiris. Meanwhile, Venter dislikes the fact Roy has seen and learned things about his experiments, so he orders Brett to deal with him by hiring random assets instead of trained soldiers, so nobody can track the assassins back to them. Then he asks Gemma to come to his office, and scolds her for having broken security protocols by inviting Roy over. When night falls, Roy goes to a bar and picks up a woman called Alice, who works as a dental hygienist. She's simply another conquest in a long line, and the bartender points out that Roy will never be happy with these one-night stands since he can't stop thinking about his ex-wife. While Alice is in the bathroom, he gets a call from Gemma, telling him she is about to do something drastic and she needs his help, but Venter cuts off their line before she can say more. Roy could tell Gemma sounded upset, but he still chooses to go back to his place with Alice instead of trying to reach her again. While Roy and Alice have fun together, Gemma puts Roy's hair and blood in a tube that she inserts inside the machine she has been working on. Seeing this on the security cameras, Venter decides she has gone rogue and sends Brett after her. This was the last normal day Roy got to live before the loop started. 
But now that he has revisited his memory of his conversation with Gemma, he realizes he has never checked the birthday present she has sent her. So he finally opens the package and finds a book titled Issy's and Osiris, with a note from Gemma on the back cover that says time waits for no man. He is so distracted by the book that he forgets about taking the right steps to avoid the assassins. He dies two more times before he manages to escape. Roy missed the exit that takes him to Jake's diner. Instead, he ends up at the underground Atlanta Mall, where he sits down to read the book Gemma left him. He does not understand what the story of Issy's and Osiris has to do with anything, but he interrupts his reading when he sees his son Joe. Now that Gemma is gone, Roy knows that he is Joe's only remaining family, so he follows him into an arcade where esports tournaments are held. He approaches Joe and scolds him for ditching school. Then Roy invites him to lunch, and as soon as they leave the building, he notices it is 12.50, the longest he has ever lived since the loop started. As he analyses what he has done differently, he finally realizes they must have put a tracker on him, and the metal walls of the diner and the underground location of the shopping mall have kept him safe. The assassins arrive at that same moment and kill Roy as he grabs Joe and places himself between the bullets and his son, dying as he tells him he is his father. When the day restarts once again, Roy arrives at the diner and goes straight to the bathroom, so he can closely inspect his body, going as far as putting fingers up his rear, but he still does not find the tracker. He remembers Dave's expertise and asks him where he would hide a tracker, and Dave suggests the teeth. This brings back a memory to Roy, Alice the dental hygienist, putting him to sleep on a dentist chair while Brett watches them. She had been part of their trap all along. After getting more alcohol and pliers from Jake, Roy goes to the bathroom with Dave and starts removing his teeth until he finds the tracker, only to be killed a second later by Roy number two. When the day restarts, he interrogates Alice, who tells him she had been paid by Brett to implant the tracker before she leaves. Roy follows the usual routine until he makes it to Jake's diner, where he removes the tooth with the tracker and then takes it to an abandoned building to use it as a trap. His plan works, and Pam shows up, but she refuses to say who hired her, so he kills her with her gun. Roy knows Gemma has put him into this for a reason, but since he cannot go far back enough to save her, everything is meaningless. The only thing he has left is revenge, so Roy has fun with his newfound trackerless freedom and kills all the assassins that have been chasing him. He contacts Brett and promises to find him and vent her using the phone he stole from Cavum. Roy drives to the laboratories and tries to smash the door open with the car, but he just crashes and is shot by Brett afterward. A series of loops start then, where Roy keeps trying different plans to sneak into Dino, like sending his car with bombs and pretending to be Roy number two. Stealing his ID does allow him to get inside, but once again, it takes him a few tries until he manages to learn all the tricks to avoid the guards and security cameras. When he finally manages to find a way to sneak some weapons with him, the guards are not a problem anymore. But his next obstacle is Wan Yin, whose sword fighting skills are too good for him. Occasionally, he does not die quickly enough from the sword wounds and Venter finds him, giving the same long speech about his plans to reset history before killing him. Roy learns the name of the project is the Osiris Spindle, and he realizes two things. Venter does not know it is working, and Gemma has put him in it on purpose, so he could become Osiris and stop Venter and his plans. Roy begins a new series of loops with a new plan, feeling empowered after realizing Gemma still believes in him. After going through the usual routine up to removing the tracker at the diner's bathroom, he approaches Dai Feng and asks her for sword lessons, and she accepts to teach him because she finds him intriguing. He trains with her through a good number of loops, until he is good enough to beat her. He sneaks into Dino again. This time, he fights against Guan Yin with a sword instead of guns and easily stops all her moves. After teasing her a bit by cutting off her ponytail, he stabs her with her sword. When Brett and Venter come, Roy stabs Brett in the forehead with a sword, killing him instantly. He and Venter begin to fistfight, and when Venter tries to grab a gun, Roy recovers his sword and nails Venter's hand to the floor as he explains nobody should play God and rewrite history. The past should be left as it is so we can learn from it. Venter thinks those are big words coming from an absent father and implies Joe may be in danger, which enrages Roy. After killing Venter, he gets back in his car and rushes to the mall where he finds out he is too late. His son is dead, and this probably has already happened many times during all the loops he has been through. While he struggles against the police, that does not let him come closer to see Joe's body. A bright light appears on the horizon, 
It is the end of the world, just like Gemma had warned him. Roy comes to the conclusion that Gemma is dead because he left her and never called her back when she asked for his help. And now their son is involved in this too. If the world is going to end anyway, there is no point in doing anything. One morning, he finally decides to take advantage of all the time he now has in his hands. He returns to the mall and picks up Joe to spend the day together, playing video games and having lunch. He does this every loop until the end of the world takes them and resets the day yet again. He wants to tell Joe he is his father, but he is too afraid to do it. During loop 249, Ward brings up the subject of Gemma's work, and Joe reveals he talked to her early in the morning, after she did not return home. This shocks Roy, who always thought she was killed during the night, so now he starts a new plan to see if he can save her. After resetting the day, he sneaks back into the laboratories and shoots Bender and Brett while demanding answers. Brett confesses they have been trying to find out what she did to the Osiris spindle, because it seems she sabotaged it and now they cannot control the chain reaction she started. Bender realizes Roy can sneak in, because the spindle is working, which means Gemma made him the missing mass. When looking at the security cameras, Roy finds out the exact time of Gemma's death, 14 minutes after he wakes up. After shooting himself to restart the day, Roy decides to try to save Gemma even if he only has 14 minutes to do it. As always, he kills the first assassin but afterward, he makes the routine different by jumping directly from the window and in the helicopter. The gunman is kicked off before Roy threatens the pilot with a gun, ordering him to take him to Dino as fast as possible. Once he arrives, he takes the gunman's machine gun with him as he sneaks inside the building and uses it to kill all the assassins that are together behind the door. From the pile of bodies, he takes a gun and Wan Yin's sword and he shoots every guard on his way until he makes it to Gemma's laboratory, where she is being attacked by Brett. Roy does not hesitate to kill both Brett and Venter in seconds before reuniting with Gemma, who asks him how many tries it took him to get her. He lies and says it was only one, but Gemma sees the truth when he begins telling her all the things he has learned about Joe. After promising her that he is safe, and no assassins are going after their son, Gemma explains that there is no stopping the spindle, only restarting it. She made the missing mass inside the machine, match Roy's DNA specifically, so if he enters the spindle, the day should reset for the last time, and time would go back to normal, but she is not 100% sure of that. All this is just a theory, since this is the first time she managed to make the machine work, and it was all done rushing to stop Venter. If time resumes and Roy dies, he will be gone for real, but he thinks he has learned enough information to save both Gemma and Joe without much trouble. So, after kissing Gemma, Roy enters the Osiris spindle, and waits for the machine to use him to hopefully restart the day for the last time. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy hit the like button, and if you disliked it hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. You should watch the full movie, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more video like this.